In our fourth example for string manipulation, we're going to do something similar to what we did in the previous video where we went through each and every individual letter of a sentence or string and we counted something. This one's a little bit more tricky. We're going to go through this string and count all the vowels. So if it's an A, an O, a U, an E, or an O, I think I went through all of them. Maybe I got them all wrong. But one of those vowels. We're going to count how many vowels there are. So we're going to do that. So when I click on this button, we're going to go through each and every individual uh, letter or character and check if it's a vowel or not. So that's another example of we going from the first character to the last, checking for vowels. So again, in this scenario, we've got S sentence, which is where we store in the sentence for, or the text from that edit control into the variable, the string. And I'm going to create an I variable of type integer. And this is what I'm going to use to loop through the, the letter 1 up until the end, the last character in that S sentence. And we're going to use a for loop starting from 1. And we need to go to the last letter. Now to get to the last letter, we're going to use the function called length. And then S sentence will be the parameter. So whatever the length of S sentence is, let's say it's 11 characters, it'll go from 1 to 11. And take treat each and every individual um letter or character there for, for this code. So this code will run for each and every letter. Now how do I refer to each and every individual letter as we go through the loop? Well, S sentence is the string. How do, if I refer to the first um, letter, it would be square bracket 1. If I refer to the second, it would be square bracket 2. So to refer to the one that's going 1 up until the length would be the R variable, the looping variable R that's there. So that's how you get to each and every individual letter. Now I want to check if that letter is a vowel. So let's do it this way. If S sentence equals an A, well, it could also be an E. So then we're going to put that in brackets because we're going to use an OR. And remember when you use AND on OR in your IF statements, you've got to have brackets around your conditions. OR S sentence square bracket R could equal an E. Or, oh, this is getting quite long. So there must be a simpler way to do this. You could do it this way, but it gets quite complicated. Imagine if you uh, asked you to check if there was uh, like 10 letters, if you had to count if, if one of those 10 letters. This is tapping get quite long and winded. So there are lots of ways of doing it. I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to show you the one way, which is using set notation. We can take that S sentence R and check if it's in the following set and you put the set in square brackets and everything that you wanted to check must be in here. So I want an A, double quote, or single quote, sorry. Then I put a comma. What other letters do I want? I want the E, I want the O, I want the R, and I want the U. There we go. So now it's going to check if that character is in the set. If it is, this whole thing will be true. If it was an M, for example, there's no M in the set, then this whole thing will be a false. So if that is true, then what must we do? Well, we must count it. So we need some sort of count variable, which we need to initialize. Whenever you're counting something, it's a good idea to initialize it to a starting value of zero. And when we find a val, we are going to increase our count. In other words, add one onto it. And then once the loop is finished, we're going to show message R count. But remember, R count is an integer, and show message only st shows strings. So we must convert it from an integer to a string. So let's have a look. There's one, there's one there, there's two, three, there's four. Four, there's five, there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There should be thirteen. There we go. So we know it's working. Great. Now, what happens if I do that again? Sorry, let me just do it again. But um, let's just say I'm just a stupid sentence. Let me say that at. Now, the, there's a capital letter. You see, now it's not working. It doesn't take into consideration capital letters. Well, I could probably put the word lowercase in front of a sentence before I check it in the set. That would work. Um, I could also do something like this, where in the set, I could also include the capital letters like A and capital 
E and so on. You could do that as well. I'm going to show you another technique that you can use quickly. You can use this technique, but there's another way that you can use um, find vowels, for example, any type of character, especially if there's uh, quite a wide range of characters. I'm going to create another string called S vowels. Or S vowels, just like that. And I'm going to set it to a predefined set of text. I'm going to set it to all the vowels in string format. So do you see what it looks like? It's just all the, all the vowels. Now, if I checked for S sentence inside of that string if it was an a the position would be one if it was an e it would be two and so on if it was an m do you see the position if i use the position of an m in that string there's no m there so the position would be a zero so anything that's not a vowel will be zero but anything that is a vowel will be some sort of number that is not zero it will be a positive number either a one or two or three or four or five so i'm going to use the pos function so there we've got the pause function. Now what am I looking for? I'm looking for this every individual letter. I'm looking for its position inside this S vowel string. So when I do that, if S sentence R, if that character is a vowel, then it will be a positive number. If it's not a vowel, it'll be a naught. So I only want to check where the position of each individual's character inside that is greater than then naught so it mustn't be naught you can even say not equal to naught that would work as well if that is true then we're going to increase count so when we run it it should give us the same result there we go what's not about that is if i want to do capital letters it's quite easy i can just add the capital letters to the string and it would still work and also let's say they ask you for a certain number of letters you can just have whatever letters you want in that string and this code will work finding the position of each individual letter inside a predefined string and seeing if its position is greater than naught so there we go that's how you do that example where we count the vowels remember we went through each and every individual letter and we go from one till the length of that string and here is the code that we're going to use to do something whether you count or whatever and remember to refer to each and every individual letter inside the loop you say the name of the string square bracket r or the name of your for loop variable for more videos on string handling go to our youtube channel subscribe go to our facebook page and twitter account to follow us whenever we update new videos or you can go to our new website which looks something like that and remember don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.